There is a small island in the Irish Sea, surrounded by clear, shallow waters, home to wondrous wildlife. A place so special that it has been given international biosphere status. The Isle of Man. People here have always lived with and by the sea. We get food from the sea, work at sea, and play in the sea. We've learned to look after the sea because our lives depend on it. Now, we are all facing the climate crisis and fisheries worldwide and running out of fish. The people of this island are pulling together to ensure a future for our children. As an alien soldier in Ireland, my wounds my eggs hin, me a de shan Ellen vanen, les kron glasse rishe kain. Growing up here in these waters, we were both inspired to become marine scientists and work to protect what we love. There are so many things we can do to combat climate change and we're working on one of these solutions right here in the waters around our island. There are plants and algae growing in the shallow waters around our coast, meadows of seagrass, forests of kelp. They protect the land by taking the force out of the waves and stabilizing the seabed. They're also vital nursery grounds for young marine life. If we protect these habitats, they will help protect us. To fight climate change, as well as reducing carbon emissions, we need to draw carbon out of the atmosphere. Carbon isn't just in the air, it's also dissolved in the sea. This is where the seagrasses, kelp and animals come in. They absorb carbon really rapidly as they grow. They also catch particles floating by in the water, and all this carbon gets stored safely away in the seabed. This is called blue carbon. These plants and animals in the sea are precious allies for humans right now and must be protected for all of our futures. To protect our seas and the carbon it holds, we need to know how much carbon we have and where. Leading scientists from the National Oceanography Centre have come to the island to help us study our blue carbon stores. One of the things that really interests me is the role the oceans play in locking carbon up. And that, of course, is so important at the moment because if carbon is locked up in our oceans, it's not in our atmosphere. So what we do to study that is we take hollow tubes and we push those into the sediments as far as they'll go. And then when we pull them out, we get essentially a nice long pipe of that sediment, which we can take back to a lab. So we can take a look at the sediment from top to bottom and we can see how much carbon is stored within that sediment. And this, of course, is really important information for the Manx government with a view to maximising the carbon that is locked up in the seas around the island. What the island's doing here is really pioneering. Because we've got control over our territorial seas, it gives us the ability to move, to put legislation in place, to change things, to set up experimental areas that you wouldn't be able to elsewhere. So that makes the Isle of Man able to lead the world in looking at these projects. So if we protect and restore our plants and animals in the sea that store carbon, what does that mean for our fishing industry? We've actually brought those two things together, fisheries and conservation, and established a network of marine protected areas which extend over 50% of the zero to three mile area. So within them, there's protected populations of, of scallops or lobsters or crabs, and they produce larvae which drift out and settle on the, the commercial fishing ground. There's a kind of a win-win situation between conservation and fisheries, and that's really a unique feature of the Isle of Man. The Isle of Man is leading the way in sustainable fishing, especially for scallop populations. We carry out regular surveys, which tells us where the best stocks are, so we can target those areas and become much more efficient. And the surveys go back for 30 or 40 years, so we've got a very long data set. Every single time that a fishing boat goes out, it acts as a research vessel. We have a smartphone app, which allows the fishermen to tell us exactly where they've been fishing, how many bags they've caught, how long they've been fishing for. General fishing ground, no. And then it just asks for a rough GPS position on the map in this area here today. We then use that to set catch limits for the next week or we advise people on which area they should fish in. The advantages of that is that the seabed contact is reduced and that's good for the environment. 
hard to tell the future of any fishing industry at the moment, but it looks pretty good here because of the way they look after it, you know. There's a strong effort made here in protecting the fisheries. And so when we think about blue carbon, there are benefits there for the fishermen as well. That you're protecting the habitats, there are blue carbon benefit, but you're also providing yourself with the, the nursery grounds for tomorrow's fishing and next year's fishing and your sons and daughters fishing as well. Ramsey Bay is a fantastic example of how if we give space for nature to do its thing, we can have a thriving and sustainable fishery. The scallops there are of really high quality and they are surrounded by nature that's thriving. We, as an industry, asked for it to be closed in 2009 because we felt it had been overfished. So we closed it for four years and then we started surveying the area and the scallop stocks had improved. In 2013, we started fishing it and have been fishing it every year since then. It's a great place to have learned all these lessons which we're now applying to the rest of the territory. Sea. Growing up, I knew how important that fish conservation and sustainable fisheries are because we've seen how fish stocks can come and go and the devastating impact that that can have. I'm absolutely convinced that the Manx fishing fleet are committed to being custodians of the marine environment. People can invest here because they know that it's, it's sustainably managed and the seas are healthy. This shows that we can have food production that is profitable whilst protecting and restoring our living seas. Blue Carbon has benefits for other Isle of Man businesses too. Businesses have a very pressing need to demonstrate that we're doing our bit on the journey to net zero carbon. And the high quality carbon offsetting that Blue Carbon may be able to provide is an essential part of that. Being in a place that has a strong, sustainable approach to development will keep a lot of businesses here and attract a lot of other businesses. So I think there's a huge amount of interest right across the business community. Here on our island, our sense of community and our sense of pride are everything. Whether by birth or by choice, this is our home. This is our island and this is our sea. The community we have is so positive and wanting to engage in these projects and wanting to contribute and we need to enable that. The facts that some of the children I've worked with over the last couple of weeks have come out with about nature and the sea and it's really great to see that they're already engaged in their environment. I'm really hopeful that, that the connection that they're making with the sea is a lot stronger even, even than mine. I'd like to see abundance and diversity of life that's thriving, that everyone gets to enjoy for generations to come. It's really exciting to see the collaboration that's already happening in the Blue Carbon Project and everybody can see the value that looking after our Blue Carbon has. As a small, independent island community, we can work together to restore and protect our island seas, make the most of its Blue Carbon, and to lead the way for other islands and coastal areas to do the same. I'd love to see a future where our marine environment is protected, where we have a real understanding of the opportunities that exist under the sea, so that people on the Isle of Man can really truly value it and preserve it for future generations, because I don't want it just to be my children and their children. I want it to really be forever a future for all of us where the carbon is well managed, where climate change is a, a thing that we have solved. And I believe we have a real opportunity here to be a big part of that. And I love the sea, you know, it's, uh, it's not so much a career, it's a way of life, you know. So that's why we do it lots of times for nothing, you know, whereas you wouldn't do an office job very long for nothing. It's a very calming place under the sea. Um, it's quiet, there's not so many people around, and it's, if you get a good quality marine environment, it's just full of interesting species all doing their thing. I couldn't imagine not living by the sea. It, it, it's my happy place. I still try and make sure that every day I'm appreciative of, of where we live. Sequestration, 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 sequestration. 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 Sequestration.